So now what we'll do is we'll take the problem we worked out by hand and we'll put that into a computer simulation. And this is using the PSCAD program. Um, I'm using a slightly different version than what you have here using PSCAD 3. I'm using PSCAD education, educational, so it has a little bit more capability. If you want to use this particular version, I've got some instructions up on the website for using this using what's called VCL, which is a server-based system that um, NC State operates. But, but anyway, what I've done is I've created a simple circuit. This example is posted up on the Moodle site. Where what we have is we've got a voltage source, we've got an inductance, we've got a capacitance, and then this is going to be switched into the use of the circuit breaker. In order for me to add a resistance later on, I've gone ahead and put a series resistor in the circuit, but I just set it to a really small value. So then in order to put it in, I don't have to rebuild the circuit. I just go ahead and enter some values in for the resistance. So anyway, if you were going to look at each of these different models, um, you see we have this set up for 7.2 kV. So you put in the RMS value, you put in the frequency. The impedance data format is what we call this RRL format, um, but we're just going to keep these values kind of small in this case. And as far as the AC values, if you go to AC source values, you can also set what the initial phase is. And so this uh, model right here assumes we have a sine type of a waveform. And so if I put in an initial phase, it's going to be initial phase shift with respect um, to the voltage starting at, at, at zero volts and, and increasing. Um, for the initial values for an impedance, again, I'm just putting some really, just have some really small values in here. Uh, just kind of small enough where it doesn't really play into the solution any. For the circuit breaker, what I have in here is I got kind of like the standard model. And one thing I just want to point out as far as the circuit breaker model, if you go to breaker main data, it's got a breaker open resistance and it's got a breaker close resistance. And this is for the sake of simulation where you choose a value for open resistance that makes it look like an open circuit and you choose a value for closed resistance where you kind of make it look like a short circuit. You can adjust this if you want to. But what this means is you don't have an ideal uh, open circuit, short circuit model for the circuit breaker that you basically would use a small resistance and a large impedance in order to represent this breaker opening and closing. And, and the nice thing about having this sort of a model is you don't really create any uh, model discontinuities. Uh, if you would just simply have an ideal circuit breaker, then basically what happens is the two buses on each side of that circuit breaker have to get combined together in the circuit model. If you had a circuit breaker close, you open it, that would actually create two buses if you had an ideal model. And so in order so the program doesn't have to do that particular bookkeeping, what we do in here is we use a small impedance to represent a short circuit when it's closed, and we use a large impedance to represent when it's opened up. So it, we avoid having uh, circuit discontinuities with this particular type of, a, of approach right here. The, the other thing you see in here is we have some logic for operating this. And you see I've actually got two breaker operations where the initial state's closed. And so what I'm going to do is it starts off closed. I'm going to open it at some point, and I'm going to close it up again. And so basically the reason I'm doing this is I need to initialize the voltage on the capacitor bank. And then I'm going to have the regular circuit operation that corresponds to the point of wave that I'm after. So in this particular case for the problem statement, I need to see if I can move this up just a little bit more. I guess not. Yeah. Here we go. Now I could toggle back and forth. Um, what, we're, what we're doing here is we're looking at a case where we're switching this capacitor on so it corresponds with the negative peak of the source. But the other thing we need to do is we need to make sure this initial voltage is 1,000 volts. So the thing with PSCAD 
is you can't plug in an initial condition for the voltage like some other transit solving programs. Um, this is kind of a dangerous thing, this capability of plugging in initial values because you might enter in inconsistent values. And so what PSCAT always requires you to do is kind of build up the initial conditions from scratch where you have to kind of charge capacitors up, um, things along those lines. And so what we do is we actually start the circuit up and we go ahead and apply the voltage on the source side and then what we're doing in this case is we're actually getting this capacitor charged up where as when that capacitor hits a thousand volts we go ahead and open the capacitor up and that turns out to correspond to a time of uh, t equal to 0 0.00026 plus whatever time we have in there for actually getting the initial condition. So we're putting in one cycle, and then we're putting in a little bit of initial time in here to get the, the, the proper offset. One thing you'll note in here when we do this, and we set up this initial value, that this circuit's not exactly in steady state. There's still some transits in here, and you note that they don't damp out, because there's no resistance in the circuit to damp these out. So we have a little bit of a ringing oscillation in here because when we start this simulation up, it's almost like we create a little bit of a transit. But anyway, what's important as we get this capacitor voltage to 1,000 volts, and as soon as it hits 1,000 volts, we open up this switch. And since there's no resistive damping in the circuit, that capacitor just simply holds that voltage of 1,000 volts. Then what we do is we set the switching time up where this circuit breaker is going to close back in again when we hit a um, voltage point of wave that corresponds to a negative peak. So you can kind of do this analytically or you can do a little, this, this little bit trial and error. Um, but this particular time um, is going to correspond to when we hit the uh, negative peak of the waveform. And so when you have the circuit breaker set to this value of the 0 0.0292, then what happens is we get the switching uh, of the capacitor bank. And what we see is this uh, capacitor bank is going to start charging up in the opposite direction. And we see this high frequency ringing transit superimposed on top of the 60 hertz. So you've got the high frequency portion. This is what we calculate by hand. You also kind of see there's a 60 hertz portion as well, but it's not something that's part of our hand worked example because we assume that the um, source was basically DC in that case. So we're getting a little bit more of an accurate representation. What's really important to get out of this is does our peak voltage match up? And you can see in this particular case, if you're looking at peak values for uh, voltage in this particular scenario right here, um, that we're getting about minus, I don't know, minus 20.63. We're not seeing all the points in here, which is actually pretty close to the minus 21 kV we calculated. Um, so anyway, it, it matches up pretty close to what we would have uh, what, what we had gotten by hand in this particular scenario here. But anyway, once we get past this peak point, then we just kind of see it oscillates over and over again. It actually hits this peak again because there's nothing to damp this out. So we have an L and a C. Basically what's happening is just energy gets kind of transferred back and forth between the um, two, two components in this case. So now if we're going to go ahead and add some resistance into the circuit to see the damping effect, we can do that. And we put in a resistance of 0 0.09 ohms. So we go into the simulation and we change this value here to 0 0.09. Hit OK. So now we got a value in. We could rerun the simulation. 
it doesn't really impact the peak that much and you kind of saw that when we worked this through by hand um, does a little bit but the thing you definitely notice in this case is that the transits start to die out and if we would make this resistance larger and larger then it would die it out even faster and so resistance in a sense is kind of our friend um, basically what resistance does it acts damp it adds damping I know it's associated with losses but resistance in the line model resistance in the load model um, damps out the transits in, and reduces the stress on the equipment Something else you could do in here too, if you want to evaluate different types of solutions, is you could take a look at adding the pre-insertion resistor, and I talked about this a little bit in the main lecture. The nice thing about PSCAD, I'm not going to do this right now, but nice thing about PSCAD is it gives you some ability of adding this into the model. So if you go into the configuration of the breaker, what you can do is you can you can select the use of pre-insertion resistance. And then what this is going to do, it's going to put in whatever you specify for the pre-insertion resistance. And then you can specify the, the time delay as far as how long you keep this in the circuit. You don't really have to keep it in the circuit too long. In this case, I'm just keeping it in for one cycle. And you can see what this is going to do is it's dramatically going to damp out the transits associated with this. So anyway, just a little bit of an example for you guys to see. Um, how the PSCAD model could actually get applied to looking at the switch capacitors.